we've been talking, I don't know, over a month now, and kind of laying the foundation of what it means for us to have a passionate relationship with God. And as I've been saying, the, the first layer of that foundation, the basic layer of that foundation, is the simple fact that God loves us. Right? Nothing more, that God loves you. It's not what you've done, whether it's good or bad. It's just who God is. God loves you. Right? And that's been the first basic layer of this passionate relationship. With God. The, that we have an opportunity to love God back. Right? And that's what God wants from us. God, more than anything else in your life, God, what God wants is you to love Him back. That's what God wants. And the third layer which we are on is is about what does that mutual loving relationship look like? That if we are in a mutual loving relationship with God, that it should be for us, at least, life-changing. That something should be happening, transforming in our life. And last week, we talked about how we are to honor God with the best things in our life just the way we would do in our relationship with our loved one, right? If we really love somebody, for example, in my life, if I really love my wife, do I give her the worst time of my day? Do I give her the worst part of my attitude? Do I give her the worst part of my emotions? No, I should give her the best time of my day. I should give her the best of my emotions. I should give her the best of my attention, right? Isn't that true? Yeah. Isn't that what you guys want from your loved one? Uh -huh. Right? Yes. Let me hear you say, is that what you want? Yes. And that's what God wants from you. God wants the best of you because God loves you. And today, I want to talk about what it means for us to stay in love with God. And staying in love with God is one of the easiest things for us to forget. Think about it. All of us, I would say, have been in love at one point or another. And we remember, hopefully we remember what that was like. Right? And for me, before I got married, or before you got married, some of you, and you found somebody to love, do you remember? For me, I did my best to present my best. I was like, Spending money on clothes so I would look nice. I was clean. I would shower once, twice a day. I smell good. You know, and I hung out with guys who would like overdo the cologne. Right? When you're young, right? You overdo the cologne because you want to smell really good. Do you guys remember that? You would work out because you want to like physically look your best. Now it's just kind of like a bump and talk. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, that's kind of nice. Something to hold on to. It's good. And, but I think the reason that staying in love is one of the easiest things to do is because we get so comfortable with the one that we love. After being in love with that person for a while, we get comfortable. And we take them for granted. We use the thought of being an eternal soulmate as an excuse to say anything we want to our loved ones, whether it's our BFF, our spouses, right, our kids, our parents. We just say stuff, blurt it out, even if it hurts them, even if it doesn't help them. You know, there's an idea that married couples shouldn't keep any secrets from each other. I think that's a bunch of bull. You guys can think about it. If you love somebody, you don't say everything to them. You don't share everything to them. There's a lot of stuff I don't say to my wife because I know it won't be helpful for her. I know it would hurt her, so I don't say it. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Let's watch this little video. Let's see if we can get this video up and running. This is a little commercial which I thought was funny. I just took a little clip from it. And let's get the volume loud. You got to hear it. Oh man, I 
I love that. Did you guys hear what she asked? Does this dress my, look, make my back look big? And he's like, uh, and he's honest, supposed to be honest Abe, right? And honest is the best policy. And so he goes, well, just a little. I, personally, I don't think sometimes honest is the best policy. You guys think about that. In your relationship with your loved one, sometimes you don't need to say some stuff. Sometimes you should just keep it to yourself. Sometimes you should just keep your mouth shut. Right? If you love somebody, there are things you just don't say. Because you know it will hurt them. Because you love them so much, you don't want to hurt them. You don't want them to struggle with it. So you just don't say it. And Staying in a passionate, loving relationship with God. The first thing is this. Staying in love is something that you have to work on all the time. And Jay mentioned this. Okay. Staying in love, you got to work on it all the time. And I know there are people here who have been married longer than me. I've known my wife. We've been married 24 years. I've known her four years before that. That's a pretty long time, well, close to 30 years. But I still discover today that our relationship is something that I have to work on all the time. And it's not that we have a bad relationship, but that's just the nature of having a loving relationship. It has to be worked on all the time. And as soon as you forget that, the relationship begins to kind of fall apart, begins to, begins to drift apart. I want to ask you guys, is there a relationship in your life right now that's kind of drifting apart, falling apart, seems out of control? And I want to challenge you guys and think about it. Are you working on it? We rationalize our behavior with God. We do. Because I think it's, easy, it's even easier to abuse our relationship with God than it is with our spouse or even our best friend. We rationalize our poor behavior with thoughts like, Oh, God understands. Or, oh, God will forgive me. Or, God, I'll get to you a little bit later. As easy as it is to forget and put off staying in love with God, the good news is this, that staying in love is one of the easiest things for us to do. It is. Staying in love is actually really easy. It's one of the funnest things to do in life. It is one of the most exciting things in life. And when we can come to understand that, you know what? Your relationship with your best friend, your relationship with your spouse, is going to get better and better and better. And your relationship with God is going to grow deeper and deeper and deeper. It is. When you wake up in the morning, you should be excited about the relationships in your life. You should be excited and be able to say, oh my gosh, how good is it going to be today? Right? But when you don't work on it, what do we say? Oh my God, what's it going to be like today? It's going to, oh. We've got to be able to wake up in the morning and be excited. And you will be <coughs> if we work on the relationships that we have. Think about your relationship with God. You know, when you're in love, and as I said, all of us have been in love at some point, go back and remember. Remember falling in love. And I remember falling in love with my wife, Jean. We used to laugh a lot. We still laugh, but we used to laugh a lot. And back then, I used to laugh at even things that weren't funny. Because I was in love. I would drive any distance to see her. It didn't matter. A foggy, cold winter night on New Year's Eve, I would drive down to Portland to drop off a box of oranges at her door and not even see her. You know what I mean? I would be, you know, See how we got a lot of hills. When it snows, I would still get in my car and drive to where Jean was in the door to see her. 
and totally wrecked my car. Oh. And still call and say, honey, I'm so sorry I'm late. <laughs> I'm still coming. I'm taking the bus. I'm walking. I'm coming. Right? Do you guys remember that? Do you remember talking long hours on the phone and time went so fast? I would work all summer and I would work like a dog. I used to work with Andy and you know Uncle Nick that, you know, their brothers. They used to have a construction company. They would work me like a dog. We would work from like six in the morning till eight at night, painting, finishing hardwood floor. And that's some of the hardest work, right? We would literally work like 12, 14 hours a day. And I would make that money. And on the weekends, from whether when I lived in Tacoma or Woodby Island, I would come home on the weekend and I would take that money and I would call you, hey, let's go out again. Hey, what are you doing? Let's go out. I would save that money and when school started, all year, I would spend that money on who? Who do you think? Huh? Jean. I would take her out to eat. When I think about it, I think she was kind of using me. <laughs> I would pick her up at the door, take her all over town, eat, right? And I would not think twice about spending every penny on her. And then when I had spent every single penny and I didn't have any money left, I would go to the college coupon book that they used to hand out, two for one, you know, McDonald's, you know, whatever, rip it out. Honey, let's go eat. <laughs> She let me know years later, that was the saddest day of her life. <laughs> when I started ripping out coupons to take her out. So, oh, that was so sad. But I would do anything, go to any lengths to be with her. We know what that's like. And we really don't have to look far to understand what Jesus is talking about. He knew about love. And in Mark, he talks about it, he says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And what Jesus says is, he knew that we understood what he was talking about. Because we are by nature a passionate people. We are a loving people. We know what it's like to be in love and to do love, right? And that's why in this passage, Jesus says, you shall. It's not, you might, you could. But Jesus says, you shall love. It is a call to be active, to be intentional in loving God, in loving others. I think too many of us have forgotten what it means to be actively and intentionally in love. Too many of us have gotten too busy to be intentional about being in love with God. Too many of us have gotten too distracted in our life to be in love with God. And we've got tons of excuses. We do. I've got my own, and I'm sure you've got yours. And I think Paul understood how people get. And that's why he writes in Galatians, For you were called to freedom. Brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love, become slaves to one another. And this is become love slaves to one another. Meaning, use love as an instrument to serve other people, right? To serve God. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You, once again, you shall love your neighbor.